Hello and welcome to the Central Innovation Special Webinar. My name is Michael War and I'm the AEC ANZ Product Manager. Central Innovation is committed to the success of our clients and we are ready to assist you in your response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The purpose of this webinar is to outline the current license configurations available to you to assist you in working remotely to ensure project continuity. The first document we'll cover off today will talk about current license configurations and working remotely. And the second document will talk about project continuity options. When we purchase an ArchiCAD license, we either purchase a hardware key, which is like a physical USB dongle, or a software key, which we upload and download using the Graphisoft License Manager tool. ARCHICAD licenses are either single or network. If they are network, that means that there are a number of seats sitting underneath the same ARCHICAD license. If you have a single license, the options are pretty straightforward. If we've got a physical key, we simply remove the physical key from the back of our computer, take it home, and insert it into the back of our personal computer. Provided that ARCHICAD has been downloaded, and the code meter drivers are up to date, ARCHICAD will find a license on that hardware key. If it's a software key, we need to remember to use the Graphisoft License Manager tool to upload the software key to the cloud first before leaving the office. Then, when we get home, we need to install the Graphisoft License Manager tool and download the software key onto our home machine. In other words, you need to be physically present in order to move a key. It's important to upload the software key if we're going to make any changes to our computer. For example, updating the operating system, changing the hardware, or restoring the operating system from a backup. Replacement of lost, stolen, damaged, or destroyed keys can occur as part of select, however fees may be applicable. For our clients using network keys, we have a few more options. We'll first talk about access through what we call a virtual private network. And this is a network which is set up by an IT professional and it requires additional software and it also requires constant and stable internet access. We need that access in order to become linked into our office network and through a VPN it'll be as if you're working inside the office. You'll be able to connect into your file server and you'll also be able to see your ARCHICAD license server. Through this approach you'll be able to obtain an ARCHICAD license as if you were sitting inside the office. Now ARCHICAD checks for a license quite frequently. So it's imperative that you have fast internet and internet that is stable with low latency. This is the most common approach we see on the market. It's secure because it is encrypted end to end. The second option we have is to split a network key into a series of single licenses. And this requires a reconfiguration from a network key to multiple single licenses which can be reconfigured back later to its original state. We recommend a software key for this because we can deliver a software key within 24 hours. For a hardware key, there is shipping and there might be a delay in that. Hardware keys can become software keys and software keys can become hardware keys. If you do this though, you'll need to make sure that any additional software that relies on that ARCHICAD license is also aware of the serial number change, which will happen when we split licenses up. So if you have a third party provider for ARCHICAD libraries, ensure to update them with your new serial number. The third option we have is to extend a network key with borrowable licenses. 
each ARCHICAD seat can be extended with borrowable licenses inside a network key. This is a function applied to each seat individually and there is a fee involved. Once this function is activated, the process to obtain a borrowable ARCHICAD license is fairly straightforward. When we are present inside our office network and we're connected directly to the license server, we can click help in the ARCHICAD menu, bring up our license information, and then there's an option to borrow an ARCHICAD license. We'll be able to borrow an ARCHICAD license for 30 days and then it will be automatically returned to the server. When a license has been borrowed from the server, it's important that we do not restart that server. If we do so, you will not be able to return and borrow that ARCHICAD license until you raise a ticket with us and the processing will take 24 hours. The last option we have is to enable code meter through wider area network. This requires a port forward from the router to the license server and it exposes your router and your server to the internet with no layer of security. Again, this is an option which requires an IT professional. You also require a static IP address at the server end because people working remotely won't be able to connect if we don't know the address of your router. This address is provided to you by your internet service provider and unless you request for a static IP address or use a third-party dynamic DNS software, that address might change. Whilst being one of the more simplistic approaches to implement, is still risky to expose yourself to the internet, which is why we've left this option to last. Like access through the virtual private network option, which we discussed first, this option requires a constant internet connection. If the internet is unstable, or we see high ping, i.e. high latency. You might find that your productivity with ARCHICAD will drop. In the next section, we'll talk about project continuity and we'll explain how to keep your ARCHICAD projects running regardless of where you are. Now for small offices, chances are you have a backup and you're storing your ARCHICAD projects on an external drive. So it's possible for you just to pick up that external drive and take it home. Make sure any active projects are on that drive and any libraries are also on that drive as a backup. Because of this approach, no internet is required, but please remember that your team members won't have access to the same files. So that's a good segue into the next three topics where we talk about sharing the files over some form of internet. So the first option is a cloud-based option. We can use options like OneDrive or Dropbox or Google Drive to store projects. As an ARCHICAD user, you might already be implementing an option like this. So it's important for you to understand that there are a couple of risks here. We strongly recommend that you do not work directly from any cloud-based drive which is backing up. We've seen a number of issues where people have lost work because they weren't able to save. And we think this is an issue with how these third-party softwares lock files when they are trying to sync with their cloud-based equivalents. So if you're using one of these solutions, for your active projects, we recommend that you copy the file to your local hard drive 
and then work from there. And then when you're finished, upload the file back. The advantages of these options is that the setup is relatively easy and quite often free. There are some solutions which offer rollback options for backups if you lose a file, for instance, or you accidentally delete one. You can send files to other team members so that they can access them. It's important though to remember that the data might not be stored in Australia with these cloud-based solutions. Now, because we're shifting files around, there's a high level of data use. So I'd recommend that you put large things like libraries locally on your drive, on your hard drive, maybe inside the Archihad library folder, and just transfer the projects to and from the cloud. Also, if you're linking in external drawings, for example, a PDF or a DWG, try and embed these because remote users won't have access to your desktop. And you might find that your drawings, which you've linked, become missing. The third option we have is a file server and granting this file server access to the internet. Now, this isn't recommended for libraries or large projects or projects where multiple Archicad users are involved, generally because of the data that's transferred. Unlike with BIM Cloud, which we'll get onto in just a moment, when accessing projects through a file server, the entire file needs to be transferred over the network, including any libraries. So we've got solutions around that and we'll come back to that. This type of workflow would require a VPN access. Now, while it might be possible to set this up with a simple port forward, it's not recommended because of security issues. And like options before, it requires constant internet access. The last option we have is using BIM Cloud. Now, this information is relevant for both BIM Cloud and BIM Cloud basic users. BIM Cloud works by storing the project somewhere in your office computer or a office server, and then sharing copies of that to all joined participants. From then on, only changes are sent back to the server and to the other users. So once we do an initial download of the entire project, any extra data is very small comparatively. Because there are copies of the projects on everyone's computer, there's a high level of redundancy and the BIM Cloud software creates not only PLN backups, but also BIM project backups, which can be opened on another BIM Cloud or BIM Cloud basic installation. Now, because project data is stored locally on your computer, technically you don't require constant internet access. For example, after joining the project, you can work offline temporarily with just limited functionality, being able to edit only the things that you've reserved However, until you get back online, you won't be able to send your changes and you won't be able to receive the changes that other people have been making. To use BIM Cloud over the internet, we require either a port forward, which we've already discussed, or a VPN. You can install BIM Cloud into an Amazon AWS or cloud computer or a Google cloud computer or a Microsoft Azure cloud computer as long as it has an operating system. So you won't be able to install BIM Cloud onto a NAS for instance because NAS systems don't run either Microsoft Windows or Mac OS. So that wraps up these two documents.
I hope this has been worthwhile for you and you now have a better understanding of ARCHICAD licenses and accessing them externally and how you might be able to go about project continuity. For technical support, please still use the existing channels or email us within Australia, support AEC Australia at centralinnovation.com.au or in New Zealand, nz.support at centralinnovation.com. And for urgent cases, please call our hotline 1300 use BIM. On behalf of the customer services team, thank you very much for your time. And if you haven't already, please register and check out all the content that we've gone through, including this webinar on myci.centralinnovation.com.